Welcome to Hello Chaos. It's a weekly podcast exploring the messy and chaotic minds and lives of founders, entrepreneurs, and innovators. Hello Chaos is one of the many resources brought to you by Orange Whip. That's Orange Whip, W-I-P, for work in progress. Orange Whip is a multimedia company dedicated to serving founders and entrepreneurs in affiliate cities through hyper-local media platforms designed to inform, inspire, and create connections to help founders along their journey. We tell real, raw, and unbiased founder stories and why our mantra is where aha meets oh shit. Orange Whip is an all-in-one content hub for founders with fresh and engaging stories, curated calendars, and local resource directories. We've done all the hard work for founders, so they only need to go to one trusted place to find local information that they need. When you subscribe to Orange Whip, you get a weekly email that comes on Sunday night with all of the dates that you need for the upcoming week, um, highlights of the stories that you want to click through. So go ahead and subscribe to Orange Whip, and that's at orangewhipwip.com, and uh, enjoy our weekly and monthly content. My name is Jennifer Sutton. My friends and family call me JJ. I am the founder of Orange Whip and today's podcast host. We record live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and then publish on all podcast platforms on the following Sunday. This episode is sponsored by Worksby. Worksby is the gold standard in virtual administrative solutions. Their energetic leadership team is committed to solutions that are agile, collaborative, and accessible so you can find the strategic answers you've been seeking. They are narrow and deep in the administrative professional space and help craft the next generation of servant leaders and support executives. They help founders do what they love and take all the tasks off their plate that they hate. Learn more at worksbee.com. That's W-O-R-X-B-E-E dot com. On our podcast today, we welcome Seth Reed. He is the founder of Yeah, That Rabbit. Welcome to our 62nd episode. Seth, John, how Sean. are you? Oh, did I say Seth? I meant Sean. Why did I? My, my brain is a, is a mush. Welcome well, to the why, chaos. Oh, welcome to the chaos. Chris, that's what why Chris was looking at me. He was like, what? Yeah. Sorry, one of our team members is named Seth, and I had Seth on the brain. Uh, he just recently had a baby, and we sent him a, a rabbit. So that's what I was like for the, so the two merged together. Sean, I apologize. Welcome no to our 62nd episode. Nice. Uh, thank you for having me. And actually, amusingly, that's not the first time that uh, someone has called me Seth. And I think it's what? just because of the S-E. I've, had, I've gotten it one other time. I don't remember exactly the circumstances, but I think because I'm S-E-A-N, which is the proper Irish way to spell Sean. Of course. Uh, um, <laughs> a lot of people, they'll see the, the S-E and then they just, if, they're, if their name Seth is anywhere in their brain, yeah. they're just going to yeah. go, they're so going to autocomplete. I apologize. Right off the bat. Um, so Sean, I know, so you and I got hooked up because I heard that you were a fan of the podcast, which thumbs up. Thanks. Thanks so much for the, the shout out. Um, but you have done a lot of things and I know, yeah, that rabbit, you're going to tell us that story because, but this is just one of many endeavors. So how about you just tell us to start out, tell us your founder and your entrepreneurial journey. Sure. Uh, it's all over the map. So Hello Chaos works really well for that. So I am a tech guy. I like to say I came out of the womb, a tech guy, which is I've been staring at a computer since I was seven years old. And uh, <laughs> for those on the video, you can see how gray my beard is. So that's a long time. Uh, it's well over four decades at this point. <laughs> Uh, and so I've worked with uh, various startups. I've worked at big companies. I recently worked for a, a very large media corporation that I'm not going to mention. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We won't mention. I, I've worked with them, th- that same media corporation yeah. as a on the other side of the negotiation desk um, for several decades. <laughs> I, I hope they treated you well. Um, oh, they always do. They actually always good. do. Yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and, and really the people I worked with were great, but it, it is, uh, so having the experience of working with big companies and small companies and, um, you know, a lot of my 
sort of entrepreneurial stuff started just as me being a freelancer and doing consultant work. Um, and it goes back to the very first entrepreneurial thing I did was what helped me get my job as a web developer. Um, I was a high school cheerleading coach and I ended up building a bunch of different websites in Georgia, all about cheerleading. One of them became at the time when web forums were still a thing. It was one yeah. of the largest, uh, most used, I don't know about largest, one of the most used discussion forums for high school competitive cheerleading, Wow, which is a niche yeah. <laughs> uh, and a very specific one. And um, I was working on those and I was doing those sort of, I worked full time at University of Georgia. And I was doing that in the evenings and I was also uh, mixing cheerleading music for, if you know anything about competitive cheerleading, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> it's two and a half minutes of insanity uh, <laughs> music. And um, so I would do that music. And so that was when I realized like, oh, wait a minute, I'm doing things like I am kind of a business. I will admit that when I was doing it back then, I was not very bright and didn't realize I was running a business. And um, hopefully the IRS never finds the money that I made then because I don't know where well, it went. that's what we do it's like we gotta we gotta leap we gotta fail we gotta you know just just keep going um yeah so I'm a I'm a I, I've gotta I gotta ask this so cheerleading were you a were you a cheerleader or was it because of your tech and the the music that you like that you, that led you into the to the cheerleading coach like how did you get into that uh so I <laughs> We'll go. I'll try to make a long story not so long. In I was in high school when MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice oh. were the two biggest pop artists on the radio. Yeah, yeah. I had a friend that was a very good dancer. Um, I happened to notice like he came into school. We were in a school dance, and he knew how to dance. And I literally like I introduced myself, and I was like, "Hey, Clyde, I want to learn how to do that." And so then we became MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice. Uh, very very silly Two Again, live crew it's the, right there that was us right <laughs> i mean we had matching airbrushed overalls that his his uncle had made for us um clyde played basketball and didn't want to pay to go to football games and so he went to the cheerleading coach and convinced her to let us be spirit leaders so we weren't cheerleaders per se because we didn't have to go to practice or anything we right. just showed up at the games and um basically were the pep squad so I did that and I learned a few gymnastic skills and I had the dance background. So when I went to University of Georgia, it's a giant campus. I wanted to get more involved in the school. The football games are great. And I was like, I don't, I got tired of watching them up in the student section. I was like, I want right. to be on the field. I'm not, I can't play football. I was like, but let me try the cheerleading thing. So I ended up uh, making the junior varsity cheerleading squad at UGA and I cheered there for about uh, two years. Um, a lot of fun. I got to cheer for the women's basketball team. The one of the years that they went all the way to the finals. They unfortunately did not win, but, um, it was great, you know, getting flown all over the country by the NCAA yeah. fast forward a bit after that. Um, my cheerleading career ended, but I would still coach. I would, I would coach at gyms and, and, you know, do that kind of stuff to make a little extra money. Cause I was in my early twenties and extra money is always good. That's right. Um, and other coaches, uh, there were, I started working at a middle school in suburban Atlanta. The head cheerleading coaches there were also former UGA cheerleaders that I knew. They were starting a junior varsity competition program and needed help with their varsity program as well. And so that's how I ended up coaching. And I ended up working with them for about seven years um, and coached at, at my busiest. I had, I was either the head coach or assistant coach. There were uh, seven teams total that I was working with. Wow. Um, so you really became more like entrepreneur, but also entrepreneur as you were kind of working in these organizations, just figuring yeah. out how to solve problems, add value. It's it. I am arguably unemployable in that I don't stay <laughs> we, focused. We on hear a lot that of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is that every entrepreneur, right? Like I can't <laughs> keep a job. Um, <laughs> I got to make and, something for myself. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and this ties into, yeah, that rabbit. So I am in, and it's interesting to say this after telling the whole cheerleading story. Uh, if you see me, the first thing you think is not cheerleader ever. No one has ever thought that. <laughs> Uh, even when I was a cheerleader, because I also uh, I grew up a metalhead and came from punk rock culture. And honestly, there the whole go. story with Clyde and what he wanted to do and me going to Georgia football games and going, these seats are dumb. I want to be on the field. How do I get on the field? Uh, I came up in that DIY culture. And when something didn't exist, you just made it. Right. right. And you just figured out how to do it. And it was like, OK, yeah, sure. There are rules, but rules are for other people. 
I'm going to figure out how to do this. And that arguably set me on kind of the an entrepreneurial path. And I don't know that I realized that's what it was with, you know, when I was younger, I was just like, Oh, this is just what I do because it's right. punk rock. And now I look back on it. I'm like, no, this is making, if there's ever, you know, the, the, the you come to a fork in the road and it's like, you choose left, or right. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to go a third way. I'm just going to walk down the middle. And that's how Carve my entire path. life has been. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and so that's kind of how I ended up, you know, and, and fast forward to today, that's how I ended up where I'm at now, where we, uh, my wife and I have launched, yeah, that rabbit, or we're getting ready to launch the website for, yeah, that rabbit. Um, and all of that comes from, I was working for this last time, the, a large media company. And it was, I was like, this was fine. And it did what I needed it to do for the time that I needed to do it. But I, I didn't need to stay. Right. Um, and I was like, no, it's okay. Now it's time to, to jump. And I, I took a calculated leap. I've taken this leap multiple times before, <laughs> much less calculated. And um, this time we're able to take a, a calculated leap and, um, and really kind of throw ourselves into, into what we're doing and um, give my wife an opportunity to be an entrepreneur as well. She's sort of, she's done the, in, she was worked in the tattoo industry for about 25 years. And so that kind of, cause she's a tattoo was almost, artist, right? She's a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She what well, retired from tattoo artist. Um, she's, she, if you've seen Danny Glover and lethal weapon, it's a, <laughs> I, I'm too old for this yeah. crap. Um, and, uh, <laughs> but that is, you know, tattoo artists, uh, probably very similar to like uh, hairstylists and stuff. That was gig economy before the gig economy, right. right? You're, you're, you're paying rent for a seat and then you're, you're, you're trying to get customers to come in the door and then you're getting paid from there. So, um, and she laughs. She went to art school. She graduated uh, from SCAD with a degree in illustration and notes that in art school, there are no business classes. Mm -hmm. So when she graduated, she's like, I don't know how to make money doing any of the stuff that I learned. I then mentioned that I have an English degree, which I also <laughs> don't use ever. Um, and so it's and been interesting to be business either. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought I was going to teach high school English and talk about King Arthur all the time. And I'm doing none of that. Um, <laughs> And so it's the, leading all of that. It's just kind of this weird gumbo that put us in this position where we're at, where um, we're like, okay, look, we're going to bet on ourselves. And as cliche as that is, that's exactly what that's, we're doing. Exactly. And, and just see, see if we can take, like we have skills that people have paid for. Can we apply those skills and do those things for ourselves instead so, of giving that away to somebody? So what is, yeah, that rabbit then? Uh, Sorry, I totally interrupted you there. Um, no, no, like, no. So, what is, so you hear, you and your wife have these great skills. What is, yeah, that rabbit? All right. So, yeah, that rabbit. Here's another story. This is where the English degree comes in. It's all storytelling. <laughs> uh, we went through the Greenville Starts program, the GVL Starts program that Furman does. That Furman's, mm hmm. Uh, fantastic program. We, before moving to Greenville, we and so, uh, my wife and I and some friends had a, candle company where we made scented candles based on theme park attractions mm -hmm. universal studios and disney we were talking about disney before we <laughs> jumped on air and we really enjoyed it covid uh and us leaving atlanta uh really sort of torpedoed that so that idea went kind of dormant and and we we let it stay there but we what we found in doing that is this was my first opportunity to do things with physical products mm -hmm. i've always done digital everything i do is digital everything i do is on the internet it's like oh this is a physical product we package it we sell it it was a great opportunity for for jen to do different art and different art interpretations you know she's interpreting old you know defunct theme park rides and current theme park rides and doing it in a way that's going to hopefully not get us sued by those theme parks because it's not <laughs> it's not endorsed by them um, and so that was a, we enjoyed that and we wanted to do it again and we wanted to start something new. So that's when we jumped into GVL starts. And the initial idea was a brand called Fancore. At the time we were looking at Fancore and it's a portmanteau of hardcore and fans. Okay. That pulls from our punk rock, heavy metal backgrounds. Uh, hardcore is a type of punk rock music that mm -hmm. is loud and brash and in your face um, and, and strong in conviction. And, you know, if you meet a really hardcore fan of something, they don't, you know, they may not be a punk rocker, but they're going to be really, really intense. And you'll right. know about it again. Like it took me all of two and a half minutes to mention that I went to UGA, right? It's that <laughs> kind of thing. The issue that we ran into with Fancore as a concept is 
it was hard to explain it to people. And that difficulty ran into, we were looking at doing it for how do we merge counterculture, our counterculture experiences with sports culture and bring those two things together. What we ran into is we're super limited because Jen went to art school and I was a cheerleader and that's the extent of our sports <laughs> knowledge. Um, and, and ultimately we realized that we can't go as far as we would like with that because we don't know enough about that audience. Um, and so what we were trying to take what we did with the candles and bring that into a different arena. And I was like, ah, everybody loves sports. So we'll give that a shot. And it was a, it was like throwing a dart at a dartboard and um, a shot in the dark that ultimately when we got through the end of the program, we realized it wasn't going to work out. So from there, we're regular walkers on the Swamp Rabbit Trail. We enjoy it all the time. We live over around the corner from Furman. We're walking the trail, biking the trail regularly. <laughs> and we're talking about, that's our time to talk about a lot of this stuff. And while we were looking at Fancor, while we were thinking in terms of sports, we were trying to come up with interesting interpretations of things. And one of them, which is the rabbit you can see on my chest and... Mm -hmm. Oh, for the folks on video, um, this is Lefty the Rabbit. This is uh, a handmade pillow. My wife actually drew this, painted it, stuffed it, sewed the whole thing together. She is uh, ridiculously talented. But she came up with this idea of Lefty the Rabbit. And it originally started as something we might pitch as like a fun little thing to do. You know, again, taking a sports mascot and interpreting it through a different lens. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we realized, again, when we don't know enough about sports, that that lens was going to be too narrow. So we ended up blowing up the whole thing <laughs> and making it very broad. So Fancore as a brand still exists, mostly because we paid for the trademark, so we still want to use it. So Fancore as a brand is literally just a brand of brands. It's a parent brand for other ideas that we have. We may bring back the theme park idea. We've got a few other things. But the first big one we're doing is, yeah, that rabbit. Okay. So we took Fancor and made it broad. And then we took the first project under Fancor and made it very narrow. And we have this great rabbit. We named him Lefty because the first idea that we came up with is walking on the trail. If you've been on there and you have the Lance Armstrongs that come blowing by you, <laughs> don't say on your left. We decided <laughs> that what we need is a shirt. That says on your left, which is on your aha. Uh -huh. It's a it's a nice reminder. We're trying to be loud uh, in colors and fonts, but polite and remind people to say on your left. And so we were okay. We have this rabbit. We got these shirt ideas that we want to do to remind people to have some etiquette. You know, use your effing manners while you're <laughs> on the trail. And ultimately, when we sat down and we looked at that, we like this is the idea. You know, we go lots of places. Uh, we buy lots of different merch. We love different apparel. I am an admitted T-shirt snob. I won't buy a shirt from a big box retailer because somebody else may have it. Um, if I'm wearing a shirt, I want it to be sort of indicative of my personality and right. the things that I like and my interests. And so we're like, okay, well, I buy a lot of that stuff. We see a lot of that stuff. We go to those stores when we go to different cities, when we're in our city. Um, I'm originally from Pittsburgh and a number of shirts I have that are from a Pittsburgh based company about Pittsburgh are absurd. So we said, what if we did that for Greenville? We love this city. We, uh, we call it our Goldilocks city. <laughs> we were in Atlanta before that I'd lived in Athens. Athens was too small. Atlanta is too big since moving to Greenville three years ago. It is just right. Oh. We love the people here. Love it. We love, we love that the people here love here, which mm -hmm. is awesome. And so ultimately we said, okay, we got this rabbit. We have these rabbit ideas. Uh, the rabbit is also great because in folklore, again, English degree, it, he's the trickster, right? He's Loki. He, he's, <laughs> he's Bugs Bunny. He gets to do all the fun little little tricky stuff, which fits our personalities really well. We're, we're again, we're, we're aging punk rockers. We stand outside the mosh pit now because everything hurts. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, but that's our background. And so we're bringing that concept in and we said, all right, we're going to take this. Yeah, that Greenville has been amazing as a marketing term for the right. city. And you see any number of, yeah, that insert thing here. That's right. Um, so we said, okay, well, we've got Lefty the Rabbit. Let me go see if yeah, that rabbit .com is available. It was. And from there, built out the name. So now we have yeah, that rabbit .com. That is going to be the e-commerce store. It will be launching probably right before this airs. 
Okay. Um, and uh, that's going to be, and yeah, that rabbit is our love letter to Greenville. It is, uh, we're using Lefty as our mascot to explore and celebrate the weird, wild, and wonderful of Greenville. And it is bringing our take on things, our desire for merchandise and apparel, and bringing that focus, the thing we are trying to do with sports, and bringing it into Greenville specific things. So, and, um, and taking a leap off of your artistic. Both of you and your wife are very in that that creative space and the the artist space, and it and it's almost like the manifestation of your personalities kind of coming to life through merchandise and and like you said, the love letter to Greenville combined. Yes, yeah, oh, that's- a thousand percent. That's exactly what it is. It's you know, Jen gets to draw cool stuff. We get to put it on shirts. It's the kind of stuff that I would buy, and then we get to share that with everybody else. That is fantastic. So. Sean, I'm going to pause. We, we did get, since we are live, we have some comments that came in through, I, I, I think it's a shared buddy of ours, but Kevin Weir, if you, <laughs> with the SBDC. Um, oh, yes. Name sounds you, familiar. I think we have talked. Yes. Yeah. He is. He's an old buddy of mine. Um, he's been on the podcast before, but he's a great business coach um, and, and mentor for a lot of businesses, but he does work with a small business uh, development council. Um, and, and one of the centers, I think, I can't remember which center he's out of. Kevin, if you're still listening, you can, you can pop in whatever center you're in. But he did have a, he says, hey, Sean, I know that, Sean. Do you have computers? Do computers have wombs? Uh, sure. I mean, I'm a software developer, so I can write one. And then, uh, <laughs> and, and then he did, you know, just leaping off of the fact of, you know, where, where can we connect? How do people connect? He just, he wanted to put a plug in for the next venture summit is September 12th and 13th here in Greenville, South Carolina for listeners outside of the state. Um, it is to meet investor groups and see brilliant presentations from real entrepreneurs and you can meet also other investors. So for those listening, Come and join. Come to Greenville, September 12th and 13th. And uh, I guess if you go on to Orange Whip, it's in our events calendar. I'm almost 100% positive that event is there. So you can find out all information about that on Orange Whip. Um, Check that out. So, so Sean, so here you've gone, I mean, like full corporate, you've done entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, cheerleading, music, uh, you know, corporate development in the, uh, you know, big media company hole <laughs> basement. Um, yes. and now you're kind of coming out and, you know, with this, with this fantastic idea. So what has been, so, and, and the other, I wanted to know, so you went through at Furman, Furman university has a, in their innovation and entrepreneurship, um, um, division. It's called the Hill Institute for Entrepreneurship and, Inno- and Innovation. They have a incubator program called GVL Starts, which is what you were, you had mentioned. What was your, you know, how did you find out about it? What was your biggest takeaway um, from that program that, that has helped you with then starting this company? Um, so I'm going to echo a little bit of what my friend Eric Cooperman has said about that program. Um, I don't, I don't remember how I found out about it. Um, when we moved here, I got on every email list I could. Uh, and now it's nice to have stuff like shameless plug for orange whip where it's like, okay, no, this is distilled down so I can look in one place. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, so I don't remember how I found out about it. Uh, but I looked at it and I was like, I think this fits what we want to do. Cause again, Jen and I are like, what, what can we do? What can we take from what we learned from this first company that we did and, you know, apply that to something else. And I was like, all right, I'm going to jump in there and we'll check out GVL starts. I also spoke to Joey Loman over at Synergy Mill because I knew he had gone through the program and he okay. recommended it as well. Um, it's interesting. I came in a little cocky because I've been, you know, I've in tech, I've worked for startups and I've, I've worked at companies as small as five people including myself. And I've worked at companies thousands. I was like, Oh, I know. I know all I know how stuff. to do this. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I lived through the TV show, Silicon Valley. I know what happens here. Um, and to be honest, I didn't, I, 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 you know, and again, particularly cause we're working in the world of, you know, we're making physical products. Right. And, uh, that's a whole other, 
kettle of fish. Um, and, and so I was really humbled, but at the same time, while being humbled at no point did anybody in the program be like, yeah, idiot, this is how you do this. Right. And, um, they were, they, they are to this day still super supportive. I can't say enough nice things, kind things about Paul and Brian from the Hill Institute uh, and really everybody we worked with at the Hill Institute. They brought in fantastic speakers to talk about all kinds of stuff. Um, they were actually instrumental. So as we were putting together these ideas, we were venturing into unknown territory. When we were looking at things with sports, we didn't know anything about, you know, dealing with IP. Right. right. And, and all the licensing and, and all that. Oof. Yeah. And it was, and it was, you know, when we had the theme park company, we were complete punk rock gangsters doing it in the gray area <laughs> and like, ah, oh, whatever. Well, if we get sued, we get sued. Um, you know, if we get a C and D cool, uh, right. it means they paid attention. But you know, when we're looking at, okay, I really want to do a design for university of Georgia. We want to do this, you know, crazy bulldog that looks like a demon. Right. So, we're like, oh, well, we don't know how to do any of that. And they have really big lawyers and that's not fun. So <laughs> NCAA is, is hardcore when it comes. Yeah. To yes. Writing. Yes. <laughs> um, and, it, and ultimately, again, that was one of the things that we realized is uh, th those are very expensive and tricky waters to navigate. Yeah. And the schools themselves also, you're not making a thing unless the school gives you the thumbs up to make it, yeah. which, um, my biggest complaint that's kind of started Fancore was that there wasn't a lot of stuff. You know, I wear band merch. I, right. I, I wear like user merch. generated content. They don't really encourage that. Do no, they? <laughs> no. And, and so I was like, okay. Uh, and now I understand why I was like, because right. it's, it's not, uh, it's not an ecosystem that's designed for that. Right. Um, okay. I, I'm gonna do a little side note here. This is a stupid little, little fact that I learned. Cause I'm in a couple of, you know, nerdy comic fandoms. But like Archie Comics is like that. So they lock down. They don't allow fan art. They don't allow any kind of freedom of expression. But yet they, you know, then they, um, Warner Brothers owns eventually that IP for Archie. And then they create Riverdale on the yeah. CW, which is, Kristen's looking at me like, what's, you don't know what Riverdale is. Seriously. <laughs> no, I do not. Okay. No. I don't watch a lot so of TV River, in my house. Do you know what River, it's bluey. I, I mean, do. you don't have to do. watch it, but you know, if you've ever heard of it, but yeah, it's like Riverdale is taking the, this click. Cause what Archie comics was one to protect of it's clean. It's family friendly. They, they're like, we don't want to have fan art. We don't want to have fandoms in there creating fan. Like they locked down AO3 and fan fiction Tumblr. There's like nothing around Archie comics <laughs> And which was just ironic that they then allowed this, the Riverdale show, which is based on Archie comics. And it's like, are you at least familiar, Kristen? I, know I do I'm know like what Archie comics are. With the, yep. with yeah, the Archie yeah. comics, but it's like turning all of those characters into, yeah, it's, it's, you know, Betty goes Dawson's Creek. Right. Archie goes Dawson's Creek. But wow. Like got that reference. Almost though. to the borderline of, of it's PG 17. Right. <laughs> like, you know, Veronica runs like a, a a brothel in her basement of her home. You know, Betty's like out here doing, you know, drugs and all like, so it is Lord. not clean cut, you know, Archie. So anyway, but yeah, that was, uh, but it's just interesting how you're right. NCAA and the sports, they don't allow that freedom. They have like lockdown fan fandom um, yeah. spirit. Yes. In, in essence. And, yeah. And they, they protect, all of that, you know, with, with a, a real intense ferocity and, and we're, you know, Jen's done a lot of different fan art. Um, amusingly, we got a cease and desist. Uh, we had an, she had a piece on Etsy <laughs> that got taken down. Um, and it's amusing. It was a, it was a piece that was inspired by Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We're huh? huge horror fans. Yeah. And she had Texas Chainsaw in the title and, we got it. Take we got the takedown notice. We submitted it to the you know. I I, I found out who owned the rights to Texas Chainsaw, and right. I said this is a you know. I, I explained what it was, and they said you can repost it, but don't have the words Texas or Chainsaw anywhere in there. Um, <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. Right. So we learned the hard way about you know again playing in sort of someone else's sandbox, right. and so through that. Um, learning those things, we knew like there are things we're going to have to figure out and we're going to need a lawyer to do it. Uh, Furman's class E podcast actually had an interview with Doug Lineberry, who yeah. is a fantastic IP lawyer. 
He's been on I, this podcast a few times, given some extremely good tips. <laughs> dude, he's he's so great, and uh, we also enjoyed um, when we had our first Zoom meeting. His background was full of action figures and toys, and um, <laughs> you can't see all of them, but my entire desk is covered in that. So we bonded over the whole comic book connection. Um, but he helped us navigate and understand those waters uh, as far as like what we would need to do, and that was then played a, a pivotal role in. Um, to be redundant in the pivot that we made when we said, okay, sports isn't going to work, but what can we do that we can create that is our own? And then we learned all about trademarking and copywriting. So lefty is copy you know, lefty is copyrighted as a design. And we've right. got the name trademarked and yeah, that rabbit trademarked. And, and that all happened through the classy podcast was recommended to us as part of the curriculum. And that topic in particular was in there. And then I, I, after listening to that podcast, went to Brian and said, I want to talk to this dude. And he's like, I got you. And it was two emails later and we right. were connected. Um, and it's th the resources that we have, you know, just the networking connections for that kind of stuff is, right. uh, is priceless. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it is interesting. You know, um, there are so many resources in every market, but a lot of people don't know how to connect. A lot of people don't know, you know, how do I just first engage? So the fact that, you know, you, you went into the GVL starts kind of with eyes open, um, you know, humble or not, but you got, you got yeah. went in and you got connected. Uh, so, and it's interesting you bring up the IP too. That's one of the things that we hear a lot from entrepreneurs of like, um, I wish I would have known of, um, I didn't, I didn't protect myself early on. Like, yeah. you know, some people are, you know, five, 10, 15 years into their business and they're getting a cease and desist Yeah, <laughs> and having to, you know, and it's like, how do you protect yourself? So yeah, the fact that I, I love, we've had, like I said, Doug on a couple of times. He, I know he's gone on the, to other podcasts, but to get that word out is so critical of yeah. protect your brand. Um, invest in that if you can. I mean, that's, that should be like the number one, inf number one, maybe number two investment. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, so as, as you've kind of gone through this journey, what, what do you feel like is your, you know, what's been your biggest aha, like through the discovery of, and, and the creation of, yeah, that rabbit. The, the biggest aha was when we realized, so I do all the talk about like, when I come up to a, a, a fork in the road, I take a third way. <laughs> and, and, and I, that's true. But at the same time, we realized in all of this, when we were looking at building a product, we also had to more or less stay in our lane mm -hmm. and not in a limiting way, but we know what we know. And we learned <laughs> that there's a lot that we didn't know. And in trying to venture out into like the sports area, I'm marginally fluent in that. I've got a younger brother that works exclusively in sports and can translate it for me. But it was like, this isn't our world. We don't know enough about that. And so that was where we realized like, okay, yeah, this isn't going to work. We've got to stay in, in our lane. We know, we know how to do things in our space. And so how can we take things in our space where we are inviting everybody in and saying, hey, it's a party that everybody is invited to, but at the same time, it's authentic and it is our style and mm -hmm. it is our voice and it's sharing our love. And so it was finding that and we realized that in trying to go outside of a thing that we knew in this regard, in this particular niche, it was, it was you know, uh, uh, square peg round hole. It, it wasn't going to work. <laughs> Um, and, and, and it was tough cause it was one of those things where it's like, Oh, I can conquer anything, right. Any, right. anywhere I've gone, I'm like, I got this, you know, I was a cheerleader. <laughs> I was a this, I would, you know, the, the name of our LLC is 50 different hats because we've done so awesome. many different things. And I was like, I can conquer anything. And it was like, but this one was like, no, this is, there's not enough there, there. So <laughs> there's, there's nothing to conquer in this regard. Like this was a, this was a shift gears and put your energy in the right place. Don't try to just keep, you know, r rolling that rock uphill. Right. So, so foc focusing the brand, yes. focusing the business was your biggest aha. What's been the biggest like, oh shit, what have I done? Have you had um, any of those moments yet? 
uh, so if many. So, I'm going to tell you, yeah, they're coming. <laughs> yeah, no, so many all the time. Most of them involve paperwork. Yeah. Um, we, <laughs> the financials. That's yeah. Right. Kristen's yeah. over here going, yeah. Because when I was like, if you haven't faced a no shit moment, they're coming. I haven't done receipts for my business in three months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've got it, pictures. <laughs> That's what I got. That's it. <laughs> the uh, uh, Thankfully, from all of my time sort of freelancing and consulting and, and sort of being an indie preneur, I've gotten a really good accountant. So that helps um, because I just go, you deal with this. Uh, <laughs> Here's my but, box. <laughs> but, yeah. Like here, I don't know. I, I, I uploaded it. You're good, right? Um, and, but yeah, there's, there's so many. Uh, one of them just recently. So we are... Um, Again, we're going to be selling shirts. That's our primary product. Does it merch is t-shirts, and we're working. Uh, we want to work with local folks, so we're working with Dapper Inc. They have oh, been fantastic. Love them. Yep. And and they were like, oh, hey, by the way, can you fill out this this form um, with your retail uh, vendor ID? Right. You know, because it helps with sales tax and all that stuff. And I went, I uh, say, huh, what now? <laughs> um, I was like, I've registered a half dozen LLCs for all kinds of stuff, and oh crap, this is. And it's that's been interesting. A, you're like, that's a new term. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, I probably should have had this for everything. <laughs> like the number of things that we realize now when we had the candle company that um, were not right, uh, because, you know, now that we're working with uh, w- working with other vendors to create products, it's like, oh, all right, well, let me go figure that one out. And then yeah. when we first started doing trademarks, we're like, OK, that's going to cost how much? And we yeah. need how many of them? And <laughs> And, um, and, oh, that's, that's a big, that's a big, uh, invoice I'm going to get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and again, I'm a software developer. And so of course we're about to launch the website. We're putting it on Shopify. I love Shopify. Uh, shameless plug. They're not paying me. I wish <laughs> they would. Uh, but of course I'm like, oh, but I got to build it. And you know, the, the, the number of sleepless nights that I've had over like, I, okay, we have product. I've got boxes of t-shirts sitting in my office. Now I need to sell these to pay for them to pay off that credit card that we put them on. Uh, (laughs) So I need to get this website live. And now I am like pants poopingly nervous about (laughs) flipping the switch to turn the website on going I hope it works and I hope (laughs) I've remembered like to turn off the test transactions and we actually charge credit cards um so yeah so it's it uh, as far as the the (laughs) there have been just a never-ending uh uh uh, torrent of oh shit moments along the way (laughs) and it's it's just there's things I don't know because it's real world stuff and not digital that's right so okay I'm gonna ask you so if you could hit rewind what are two things that you would do differently? Uh, two or, things or I would do. do differently or things if like, damn, why didn't I know this? Like what would be things if you could hit rewind that you would like, um, I need a duo or I need a mulligan. Um, I would, <laughs> I, I would not try to go into sports specifically. <laughs> I would, I would not try to narrowly focus on a thing that I know nothing about. Like, you know, our house is covered in action figures, comic books, and, and, and all action sports. I don't know why I thought, oh, yeah, we're going to talk about football. <laughs> would have never done that in a million years. Uh, and I recently had an opportunity to, um, to speak to a great guy that works at a place called Glory Days Apparel up in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. They're, doing a, uh, they're doing a very similar thing in Charlotte to what we want to do here with Greenville. Okay. Really unique style. Lots of great Charlotte merch. They've been around for eight years and uh, super, super helpful. Um, I spent an hour just in the store, just kind of learning all kinds of stuff. And I wish I would have sought out those folks earlier hmm. because there are, I'm thankfully I'm not second guessing a ton of things. Um, and there were some parts of that conversation. I was like, Oh good. I accidentally stumbled into the right <laughs> answer. <laughs> But there are some things I was like, oh, uh, we were, you know, there different topics that that we had planned sort of on our five year goal that uh, that we're like, oh, that's a thing we didn't think about that is going to maybe change what this five year goal is. You know, right. and it's just little again, it's stuff that that they ran into and they're like, oh, we got burned by this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we were planning on doing that exact thing. How did you get burned? And so um, if what, I could do what, it all over again, what, what, it would what be, was that? What what was can you give an example of that? Is it, are yeah, you allowed? Uh, uh, kind of, sort of. Um, <laughs> one of the things that we were thinking of doing, um, 
so we, Lefty is our mascot. We consider him sort of an unofficial mascot uh, right. of Greenville. Um, there is a part in the back of my mind that, you know, uh, Knox White, uh, if you want to email Sean at yeah, that rabbit.com and talk <laughs> about licensing him, that would be really cool. But um, one of the things that they talked about that they ran into up there is that if you are licensing something from your, uh, you know, you own it, this is your IP that you are licensing out. Correct you may inadvertently put limitations on what you can do hmm. with other things because the licensor may not want that associated with them. So if we do something wacky off the wall, crazy, it's entirely, and you know, but we have this deal with, you know, some, you know, a, a brewery or a store right. or a some, or the city is like, Oh no, we've licensed lefty, but we don't want that associated. Right. right. That's that's too weird and evil looking. We don't want that associated with this. And so that could unintentionally limit our expression, which would, again, backfire the entire thing. And these are things that I didn't think about. It's like, oh, yeah, we're just going to figure out a way we'll license them and we'll get tons of money and it'll be great. And I was like, oh, but yeah, there are things in that. I've never licensed anything before. So right. um, and and hearing them talk about, you know, there were things that they were doing that they found um when they had done some sort of, you know, uh, branded stuff with other companies that they ran into limitations that would limit what their expression is. And I was like, that, that's not something that I want to do. I love it. Um, that's a good story. And hopefully others listening. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're right. We've worked with clients doing the licensing and have gone to those trade shows. It is a, it's a whole different world. Um, and, and very legal, like, the legal legalese yeah. that you have to go through and think through is uh, enormous. Um, the yeah. paperwork and the decisions you have to make up front before you even enter in into that space. So yeah. that was that and, was good advice from from yeah. from the Charlotte folks. <laughs> yes, and and the, and the costs involved with it. You know, I yeah. I when we were thinking of licensing, and again, we haven't taken it off the table. It's just it. And that discussion gave us something new to think about. But, you know, in terms of, you know, we're like, okay, well, rather than paying for license to use somebody else's thing, we're going to come up with something that people will pay us for. But there is, you know, there there can be limitations mm -hmm. on that thing, depending on, you know, whom you're working with and, and kind of what they want to do. And I was like, okay, that actually makes, that makes sense. And right. it's something that I was sort of completely naive to. I was just like, oh, no, licensing, it'll be, yeah, he'll be Mickey Mouse, <laughs> cha-ching, we'll be set forever. <laughs> And, uh, and it's really not quite that simple. I was right. completely naive on the topic. So if you could pick two things that you could change today about your business, I'm sure one of them is the website launch without flaws. Yeah. <laughs> so with not that one, <laughs> but two okay. other things you could change about the business today, what would they be? Put you on the, the spot. Way. I know that that definitely put and, uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> uh, the, that that put me without words, which is really hard to. I was do. like, wait a minute, uh, did I just silence? <laughs> did, did I just <laughs> did I just watch his brain break in real time? Um, there's one of these things where it's like it's trying to narrow it down to like, oh, what other two things? I know because you're. I can um, see. I can feel the wheels turning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm old, so those wheels don't move quite as quickly as they used to. Um, you know, honestly, the website is definitely the biggest thing where it's like that. Um, the number of I make this decision, I make that decision, I make this decision, I make that decision. I just go back and forth. Uh, but taking that and extracting that out, um, there's a lot of fear and trepidation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am constantly worried about like, is this the right decision? Um, <laughs> as Jen is fond of pointing out, I have a really... I have a solid track record with, um, you know, in certain space, I have a solid track record with going with my gut. And there are a lot of times along in this process that I didn't go with my gut. I, hmm. you know, my gut was like, ah, that's, that may not like the original idea for fan core is like, you're reaching, like, there's no way you're ever going to be able to explain this. Hmm. And I knew that. And I kept fighting it. I was like, no, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to crack this particular code. And then there was no code to crack. So right. that th those are probably the biggest things is that, um, listen to my gut. And I, I wish I would have pulled the trigger on. Yeah. That rabbit basically blown up the original idea to find hmm. the small diamond inside of it. Right. Uh, I wish I'd done that a lot sooner. I know. I, I feel your pain. I think I was just yeah. having that conversation with 
with uh, somebody last week of, of, I need to get out of my way sometimes. <laughs> like, <sighs> of, uh, you know, you, you overthink, you, your gut is telling you this, but it's like, I don't know if I should do it. It's like, just get out of your way. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, a lot of time spinning the wheels and doing busy work for the sake of doing work and like, well, I'm, I'm working. I must be accomplishing something only yeah. to realize like, no, I'm, this no. is, this is a distraction. Right. Or you're like, I'm, I'm over complicating, um, or over rationalizing the decision that I know I should just be making. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to yeah. make myself uh, feel 100%. better. Um, so what do you do with your free time? <laughs> What's free time? What I know. Um, what is free? Well, you we talked about horror, you know, yeah, but you're yeah. a huge Disney, like, Super fan. You guys are fan, hardcore Disney fans. Yes, we are. Uh, and that's where another one of the fan core brands will probably be bringing back <laughs> uh, the, the theme park related company. Um, what do we do in our uh, So we, again, we like to go for walks. We like to go for bike rides. Um, we're on the trail frequently. We, uh, we walk Furman constantly. We made some great friends. Um, so we'll do that a lot. We love uh, like this weekend was really busy and we love again, Greenville being the Goldilocks city uh, Friday night, we were at the Greenville center for creative arts because mm -hmm. Jen has a piece on display there um, that, so they were doing their annual showcase. If you go there and you look for it, there's a really, again, this is going to be more apt for the people that have seen what lefty looks like, but if you go to yeah, that rabbit.com lefties on there, there's a really, really just kind of zany piece that Jen put together. Um, about the trickster rabbit using lefty that is on display at GCCA. So we did that Friday night, uh, Saturday night. We went to Bon Secours to watch, um, or Bon Secours. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. Yeah. Uh, the, the well, the wellness. Yeah, the well. There we go. The, that's, the, that's what you're right say. across from our office. So, we... Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> we went there to watch pro wrestling, um, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. Uh, it, all, all elite wrestling was in town. Um, Jen and I are actually on the broadcast quite a bit because we had really good seats. Nice. Uh, so it, it was so wait, fun to like air is live. It the, is it the All Elite? Um, isn't there like a, one of the, I don't know if you call them teams, but some of the, there's like a, like a three-man group. Like they walk in, their walk-in music is um, Carry On, My Wayward Son. Yes. Isn't that one that, of the? Yes. The, that is the, that is the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. The Young Bucks. That's yeah. awesome. Why do you know this? <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm a hardcore, I'm a supernatural fan. Okay. Um, so that's one of the fandoms I'm in and, and can speak a lot about the 327 episodes of that TV show. Um, but Carry On is the unofficial uh, mm -hmm. theme song for Supernatural. And so a lot of the Supernatural fans and the Young Buck fans of all of it, they, they have combined. Oh. And there's a huge, like, weird crossover. I'm not one of them, but it comes up in my Tumblr feed a lot. Like oh, I, have, okay. I see the young bucks, um, their costumes or I'm gonna call them costumes just because that's, well, that's accurate. That's accurate. They are, they are, it's like Elvis, um, Beautiful. decked out, you know, sparkles, you know, and sometimes they wear like a Harry Styles type of, you know, like it is, they're coming out in style. They got their hair dids and I mean, they are insane um performers <laughs> yeah and and <laughs> amusingly Kristen's like, how do you even know i'm just <laughs> learning a lot and i just only think about and it, this was kansas right the band was kansas yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thinking yeah. right I was like how does this, this one this like one hit wander from kansas oh my god I mean, i'm sure they had a couple more but that's really the yeah. one like has just transcended well, made, so many levels at this so point. it made sense so for supernatural because one the 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 whole show was born out of Lawrence, Kansas. So, you know, yep. and then of course they are wayward sons, the yeah, brothers 100%. and all that. So the theme song, but the young bucks are also supernatural fans mm -hmm. and, and they think consider themselves kind of the, the Sam and Dean Winchesters of the wrestling what a <laughs> weird. world. That's what I'm saying. It's like this insane, weird crossover between the two fandoms. But yeah, landing... I see it comes up on my feed a lot. But I've been enjoying just, you know, laughing at the and and you know, fun. But the just I you know, when I watched wrestling back in the day with Hulk Hogan and stuff, yes, there were Rick costumes, Flair. but it was like, Ooh. you know, that was more of the belts and the 
the, you know, the Ric Flair with the hair. I mean, these guys are in like glitter, gr- oh, you it's know, a, sequins. It, it's the whole thing. It's yeah. a whole thing. Yeah. Like, I have no concept. And, that, and that's their walk-in music is carry on. <laughs> I have got to look, but of all the Venn diagrams you find yourself in the middle of, I know it's, this is the one. Yeah. I'll be, this is amazing. It's a, uh, you know, and then it's like you, cause you know, I'm a, I'm a DC fan. So of course I'm in the Batman fandom and all that that the, the very passionate fandoms in the oh, yeah. comic book world and um but anyway sean talk about your <laughs> the disney and the and the horror because we were talking about you know the favorite time to go down to florida and disney and universal studios is halloween night yeah yeah it's it's the best time of year and well and, and so funny uh, to go back to AEW for a second um one of the amusing things about that as a wrestling organization is that when they first started, they were dismissed as the wrestling company built on t-shirt sales. Oh, So the young bucks are very entrepreneurial. They wrestled on what was known as the independence for ever. Uh, they wrestled in Japan. They wrestled here in the States. Um, independent wrestling is small organizations. I actually used to work for an indie back in Georgia. I was a ring announcer for a little while. And, um, it's that Dude, you have been kind of yelling. You have done everything. 50 different hats, 50, 50 different, different hats. hats. Um, <laughs> and uh, but so the young bucks were hell bent on again, very similar to the thing that drives Jen and I doing things their way. Mm-hmm. So they they literally started a t shirt company. Um, and they had one of the best. This is you know, 10 15 years ago. They started a group in Japan called the Bullet Club. And the Bullet Club to this day is probably one of the best selling wrestling t shirts of all time. And that's including like it. the heyday of the early 2000s and the late 90s with like Stone Cold Steve Austin and all of those folks. That's right. Um, Stone and Cold East Austin, Ric Flair, with you. Yeah, exactly. And these guys are, they were big fans of wrestling. They're big fans of classic wrestling, but also they're big fans of taking things over the top and doing things that other people weren't doing. And so there's, they, I don't know where they fall in the hierarchy, but there's a company called Pro Wrestling Tees that is affiliated with a company out of Chicago. And they were the people that were doing these t-shirts. And now they're doing exclusive licenses for all of these wrestlers. And this was built by the Young Bucks because they wanted to make money as pro wrestlers on their own terms. Well, because they made nothing. It's like 15 bucks a match. I mean, they oh. they don't get paid squat. Yeah. <laughs> so. the, 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 the running joke with a lot of indies is that it's a hot dog and a handshake. Yeah. Like you're going to drive across the country and you're not going to get paid, paid squat. And so they were... They wanted to do it, and they didn't want to go. At the time, WWE was the only company around. They didn't want to go there. They wanted to do it on their terms. And so, yeah, so AEW was an idea born out of the minds of these two brothers, Matt and Nick Jackson, that started with selling a whole bunch of T-shirts. And Mm -hmm. then now they're executive vice presidents of this company. Now it helps that they happen to find a billionaire who's a huge wrestling fan. And if there are any billionaires (laughs) out there that want to make rabbit gear, you know, hit me up. But Like, uh, you're like, come on. (laughs) <laughs> but it's, you know, those are, those are the kind of folks. And so, yeah, we're big AEW fans. Um, it was nice to go see them here in, in Greenville. Uh, and again, because of that story, right. I'm a big wrestling fan. I always have been, but also looking at what the young bucks have done, looking how that company was built around this sort of make your own path, right. uh, what really fueled us. And then on Sunday, we went to center stage to go see uh, summer Breezen, which was a uh, musical performance of oh. yacht rock music. It was fantastic. I saw that. Yeah, we were out of town. I wanted to. That's that's that was on my list. <laughs> it was it, it was a great show. Uh, we had an absolute blast, and I love yacht rock as well. So we're like, this is this is great. My wife actually has. We went and saw yacht rock review. They played the uh, the White Claw series over there on the river, and when she's drawn lefty, hanging out like crowd surfing at nice. the uh, at the concert. But it's one of the things that we love about Greenville is that we could do an art gallery, pro wrestling <laughs> and small theater. Right. And, and, you know, so, and it's, uh, if we, you could do that and, in Atlanta and you not, do that. and not spend a fortune. Yes, exactly. And, and not, not pay have a ton to in parking. Sit and, you know, pay a hundred bucks in parking. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing. And it's, you know, and it just ties into so much about what we love about the city is that we have this, there's so many different options that we can do. We're going to go see one of our favorite bands play in Simpsonville in a few weeks. It's uh, a band called ghost. Oh, okay. Um, 
go check out ghosts, everybody. There. <laughs> they are, mm, imagine queen, but evil. Oh. And, uh, and that's ghost. Um, <laughs> it's, they're a very big, big stage show um, with uh, silly songs. Um, a lot, they're heavy metal, progressive metal. Um, but the fact that they're coming to Simpsonville at the CCNB, we're like, yeah, this is great. You know, yeah. this is, we saw them in Atlanta multiple times and you would have to leave three hours before the show so that you could see them. We actually went to go see them once in Atlanta and missed the entire opening, like the oh. first hour of the show, because we were sitting in traffic outside the venue trying to get trying in the parking in. deck. Mm. And so that's, again, we love that we can do these things here in Greenville. There's nothing that we want to do that we haven't been able to do. And that's everything from our punk rock weirdoness to just walks on the river, you know, and the most domestic living, you know, norm core thing that you can think of. Right. right, and, right. And, and, and it's, that ties into all the things that we love. And I, I forget what the original question is that led us down this path, but I, we got some good stories. On I was it. like, what was your, what do you do in your free time? <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So that's what we do. We do all kinds of stuff. We're all we, over the map. We can explore all sorts of fun things. Um, so, okay. Last question here. What if we look a year from now? So imagine. <laughs> One year from now, what does your what does yeah that rabbit look like in terms of number of people, the types of service or products or your revenue? Like, what does it look like? Uh, ideally, what it's going to look like is a lot better etiquette on the trail. People are going to remember to say on your left because they'll <laughs> see so many shirts that say that. Uh, and also, we want to have our stuff um, available, right? So we want to have not just only the stuff that we're selling online, but we want it. So, uh, you know, in a year, it would be awesome if you could walk in the Swamp Rabbit Cafe or you go to Swamp Rabbit Brewery or Fire Forge or Community Tap. And it's like, oh, man, that's a okay. really cool shirt. And it's a, yeah, that rabbit collaboration uh, that you're going to buy, right? You're going to go to, to you're going to go in to get your stack of bread and you're going to see a rad t-shirt. You're like, Oh, I got to have that. That's really cool. Right. That that's where we want to be. And, and, you know, and we will legitimately geek out and probably scare people the first time that we see one of our shirts on somebody we don't know either on the trail or walking around downtown. Okay, that's us. Like that. That's right, us. Right. We did like, that. can we take your picture? This is us. And they're like, <laughs> what are you doing? Weirdo, please stop <laughs> harassing me. And I'm like, I'm sorry. We're socially awkward. Well, and so how can people find, yeah, that rabbit? How can people find you and learn more about you and, and your wife? How do, how, do, how do you want people to connect with you? Yeah, so go to yeahthatrabbit.com. Right now it's a landing page, uh, but by the time this goes out, the site should be live. Um, so, and we have the, the On Your Left shirts are in stock. We have two more shirt designs that are on their way. One is a punk rock inspired uh shirt that says swamp very large if you're familiar with the punk band danzig you'll mm. recognize the shirt design uh we're also working on another line of shirts that we are calling um aggressively positive it is uplifting phrases uh done in interesting ways so our first shirt for that will be uh, a design that says suck less it's based <laughs> on a piece of graffiti oh. that we saw at folly beach that was awesome and it's a gentle reminder like hey you know, we could all suck a little less That's uh, right. if we try. I like and, aggressively uh, positive. <laughs> yes, aggressively positive. Um, <laughs> and it's done in a heavy metal. It looks like uh, if you've ever seen those crazy heavy metal fonts that are just you know all over the place. Um, Jen's been working with that style and it's a lot of fun and it's uh, it's readable. A lot of those heavy metal bands right. aren't readable. This one is readable on purpose. But yeah, so we're trying to do that. So we'll have those two shirts will be coming soon. They are actually, uh, we just submitted the order to that ring. So yeah, probably by the time this goes live, you'll be able to see what those shirts look like and order your on your left shirts at uh, yeah, that rabbit.com. It's like, yeah, that Greenville, but replace Greenville with rabbit. And it's Y E A H for Correct. those that aren't familiar with Greenville and our mantra, but yeah, Y E A H Y E A H that rabbit. Correct. All right. Um, well, thanks for hanging out with us today, Sean. I appreciate it. It was great to finally meet you and, and talk to you. And I think we we're meeting later this week. Yes, we for are. Some, uh, for some coffee. Yes, yes. And we'll talk all <laughs> kinds of other stuff. Uh, probably about, pro wrestling a little bit. I know. Um, talk about oh, horror. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, before I forget, I yeah. and I'm glad that I just checked, uh, 
the store, like I said, the store should be live by the time this airs. And yeah. uh, if anybody that listens to the show, um, if they find the store through that, use the uh, discount code Hello Chaos, uh, oh. and that'll be fifteen percent off. Everyone, hear that? Hello Chaos, get your discount. Yes, all one word. <laughs> um, and yeah, that'll be the discount code. I forgot. I totally forgot. I, I had a note to like make sure you mentioned the discount code, and I'm glad I saw it. <laughs> That's all uh, and we'll post I, this on our on the social and. Make sure you're tagged and, and uh, yeah, let's get some merch out. Let's Love get, it. Sell some merch. Um, so, yeah, thanks. This has been great. Our 62nd episode. I love it. Um, again, this podcast episode will be published this coming Sunday and available on all podcast platforms. So please listen and comment and share. Uh, engage with us. Help us grow and build a more connected community. Hello Chaos is one of the many resources brought to you by Orange Whip. Orange Whip is a multimedia company dedicated to serving founders and entrepreneurs across affiliate cities. We are 100% free. Just, just an email to join the community. One-stop content hub just for founders delivered in a weekly email every Sunday. We are currently in three areas in South Carolina, the upstate, Midlands, and Low Country, with goals to expand to be in 30 markets in five years. Check out the new edition that just dropped. When did it drop? It just dropped on Sunday, right, Kristen? Our new edition just dropped. We are highlighting um, minority business enterprises and women business enterprises in the three areas of South Carolina, but a lot of them serve across the state and national, but these are fantastic stories, stunning photography. Um, so go and subscribe, support us again. It's free. Find your city edition and enjoy the content. Um, if you'd like to be a guest on our podcast or support us, head over to orangewhip.com, send an email um, to, or send an email to hello at orangewhip.com. And while you're there, please subscribe. Uh, let's give another huge shout out to our podcast sponsor, Worksby. Worksby is the gold standard in virtual administrative solutions. These guys do it all. They are my executive administrative assistants. We have a couple of them um, on our team, and they take all the gritty, gross, and uh, crap, both both as an entrepreneur and a CEO and founder. They take care of my personal stuff, <laughs> of checking on my kids' schedules, and they also do a lot of, obviously, the stuff for the business, but um, they are very narrow and deep in the admin space. And, uh, and have such a great matchmaking um, process that they go through. It's very scientific and data-driven to make sure that you're matched with the best support person for your needs. So for all the founders and executive teams out there listening, they can do what you love. This help, excuse me, they help you do what you love and take all the, the crap tasks that you hate off your plate so that you stay productive. Um, learn more at Worksbee, and that's W-O-R-X-B-E-E dot -E -E com. Y'all, thank you for tuning in to Hello Chaos. It's where AHA meets oh shit. Again, I'm your host, Jennifer Sutton, JJ, and I will see you next week. <laughs>